according to the World Bank, non-governmental organizations are value-based organizations which depend in whole or in part on charitable donations and voluntary service and in which principles of altruism and volunteerism remain key defining characteristics. One human being in six now lives in a precarious, unhealthy, overpopulated environment without access to daily necessities such as food, clean water, and sanitation. NGOs have over the last century been able to deliver aid and provide relief to millions of people in such conditions all over the world. It's donors that give support to NGOs. So you and your sister and your friends you say, okay, let's form an NGO. And because of, of job scarcity, I think you can say that too many NGOs have been created as a job opportunity just for one person. I think the growth of development organization itself is, is, is a problem. Uh, I mean, we don't even know what number of, of, of NGOs there are, but what we do know is that for years people, uh, and, and certainly in countries that, that are heavily dependent on aid countries like, like Tanzania, Rwanda. They also look at their own interests, the source of employment, the source of income, and I think the number has been driven perhaps more by what people can gain from any NGO, perhaps more than the need itself. In today's world, NGOs are becoming larger and more professional. These changes are likely to have serious consequences on the way and manner they operate. Large corporate NGOs will require more funds to run, and their largely non-profit structure means that an increasing amount of funds that are being donated for it will be used to run and maintain these organizations. I think this empathy is very beautiful, but it um, it's not, not, does not always lead to professional help to organizations who need this help. Right? It's empathy is not always the best driver um, to, to work on cooperation, right? because uh, development cooperation um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a profession. Right? It's a profession that you have to, uh, you have your capacities to, right? you, you have to know what kind of problems are there, you have to know what's the best approach. And maybe some smaller NGOs uh, who, are, who work from empathy uh, do not always reach um, the necessary um, impact of their work. This development has in some cases increased the efficiency and speed of delivery of NGOs and therefore, why it is not a particularly welcome trend should be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. Dutch NGOs uh, are independent, completely independent. They can do what they like. They have their own in a way of getting revenues. They collect money sometimes from the people, from the public. And they have their own programs. They can apply for subsidy from the ministry. I think we have a lot of freedom to decide on our policies. Mm -hmm. um, although, although lately there is a lot of um, pressure on cooperation with um, with other channels of, of the trend. I think 60% uh, of the funds have to be spent in certain countries and the other 40% can be spent in any other country. So that, that's, that's a restriction. Like for example, we have a contract with the, with, uh, for our own work with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's a contract for four years, the very clear conditions. And as long as we fulfill the conditions, there should not be any reason to, to stop the funding. Governments and NGO, NGOs need to collaborate together to reach their common goals. For example, in our case, we feel that we are actually providing a service to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs because the Ministry has signed many different international obligations, conventions, and through our work we help them to, to, to reach those goals. So they don't get money, which is free money, where they can just love, use their own ingenuity, but it's very much earmarked for very specific projects, and therefore the influence is very direct. Uh, 
NGOs do enjoy a certain degree of freedom in terms of uh, implementing the projects. Implementation strategies are ours. The, the, the road that we follow is our own road. Goals may be given to us. So the Dutch NGOs, they give money, which we give them, they give that money to their partners, yes. sisters and brothers, or whatever they call them, partner NGOs. The, the Dutch NGO will also uh, look at the documents from the national, the local NGO, and they will have field visits. It makes an inspection, mm -hmm. evaluation. We sometimes do evaluation. There are always cases of corruption and mismanagement of money. But overall, I would say that this, some of these big NGOs are really good. Some of them are good. And so you have to you have to see the reputation. You have to see the track record. You have to see. Uh, so we, as a we as a uh, large organization, we have a lot of checks and balances. So we might, we might be quite uh, bureaucratic also. And so for small NGOs um, in uh, development countries, it might be quite different difficult to 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 get in contact with us. A large tradition of uh, reporting, um, uh, ev uh, to doing evaluations of our work, uh, um, half-year reports, yearly reports. We keep our house in order, and we have established our internal rules. Mm -hmm. And these rules are um, controlled by uh, accountants. Uh, and within the water sector, corruption is is quite high. And we know mm -hmm. that. And maybe it's not always corruption. It's just. Um, non-transparent use of, of, of funds. But they're the least transparent in some cases. Actually, to me, governments, I work in government, the rules in government are very clear. It's written, you know, you do ABC. But the NGOs can invent their own rules. So I think NGOs really have a case to answer in terms of how they can be transparent and accountable. In terms of the board, uh, I certainly have experience where, you know, it's just their friend who comes to the board and that's it. So I think it's a very, it's a very, it's a very big point in terms of how NGOs can be trusted. I think it's very easy for them to to criticize government and criticize other organizations, but they themselves, certainly in my experience, they are no more transparent than government. The changes are are, uh, are a result of the financial economic crisis reduction of the gross national product and because of that there's less money for the NGOs so uh, they all are applying now for the new for next five year phase and there will be uh, not so much money as before so they're all nervous I'm submitted now for a hundred million a year and it's, so it's less than, than we submitted so this, that will mean that we have to cut down the program but if, it, if there is for any reason less uh, funds available, then we have to reduce the amount of work we do. If you don't have funds to pay your people, then you cannot do the work. That the funding may get reduced, but reducing the funding by the donors should not really mean that we should close down the shop and close down the projects. So these edge stops, then there are no more NGOs. As simple as that. Um, whether whether it will affect people, yeah, I think in the, sh in the short term it will affect people. Mm -hmm. But I believe that in the long term, I think people will, will find a way of coping. There are alternatives, there are practical ways of going about the projects. Uh, and uh, I would say that several non-government organizations are now switching over to leveraging local funds. Although there is a general consensus that Dutch SLIS NGOs have a fair amount of freedom in conducting their affairs, the act of soliciting and accepting donations from governments adds some constraints to the work of NGOs. These constraints have not manifested fully to a level where government involvement can be seen to be interference. However, the truth is present and must be recognized as such. 
There should be clear and acceptable guidelines defining, restricting, and regulating government donor involvement in decision-making and reducing potential influence over the donee organization.